Uh, I hope you're right. Let me throw you a question from social media again from at Nepo Malaluan. Beyond the individual candidates' agenda, what are Team Pinoy's common top five legislative priorities for the 16th Congress? Well, for Nepo, FOI is, uh, is on the top of the list. And uh, I strongly believe that the Freedom of Information Act will become an act in this ne next Congress. It's just a matter of time. I know him from uh, quite far back, and I've seen how passionate he is about this issue. But uh, that is first and foremost, as far as we are concerned. Um, second is we need health sector reform. We need to be able to overhaul PhilHealth, as well as the way our hospitals are being run. It's just a way of how we manage mm -hmm. or how we're able to cover as many PhilHealth members. But how does PhilHealth and the ho public hospital system actually impact? Correct. Uh, right now, for every for 100 pesos that you spend, yes. uh, any ordinary person who spends 100 pesos on his medical needs, only 8 pesos is covered by PhilHealth. Yes. So obviously there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. Okay. We need to be able to address uh, matters uh, concerning fiscal incentives. Three. That okay. needs to be rationalized. Okay. Uh, um, in order for us to plug the loopholes in terms of tax breaks that are actually useless, um, or if and at the all new are taxes damaging, that are coming or, up. <laughs> yeah. or or actually destroy competition because okay. they create an unfair or an unlevel playing field. Uh, we need to, to we need to talk about also reforms in terms of the transparency and accountability measures, meaning strengthening the ombudsman, strengthening the witness protection program, providing for more budget to it. it uh, this is the only country where uh, somebody who testifies against uh, an individual or a big fish will have to go through an entire gamut of, of pressure and stress and that the end game is always being able to migrate to another country, yes. uh, which is sad. Uh, that, that's uh, one area. And then fifth? Fifth, um, I'll have to get back on you on that okay. one. But, you know, there are a host of things when you look at power. Yes. Power is also uh, one of the topics that we've been discussing over the last uh, few weeks as part of the legislative ad agenda of the president. Interesting. Um, 2013 elections will pave the way for the presidential elections. I mean, what, why, you, I guess in that sense, how are you looking at these? Or is that too far ahead to look at? You know, I've been asked that question. And I, I, I've always told the people I work with now that we cannot look at 2016. Uh, because once we start doing that, we will destroy the entire strategy and campaign that we are doing today. Um, as you can see, you know, the personalities involved, at least as far as the president or the administration is concerned, you don't see Mar Ross participating at all. And I think that's also been by design right. that we don't want any distractions from the 12 candidates. Even the way the proclamation rally was done was it was clear that the only individuals who will sit at the forefront alone were the 12 mm -hmm. candidates and the president. Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually by design. And even the spokespersons are designed in such a way that we have to avoid as much as possible appearing on, on TV. Mm -hmm. Meaning, let's send our messages across, let's focus on our candidates because, that, that, I mean, that's the battle today. The battle today is we've seen how difficult it is to have a bellicose Senate. Yes. We, with all the evidence that we felt like we had, we had difficulty, uh, you know, convicting the Chief Justice. Yes. Um, you talk about syntaxes, it won by one single vote. Yes. You talk about reproductive health, it, it won by, by three. So, I mean, these are just the issues that you would want to be able to avoid so that you can uh, hammer out all these uh, necessary laws. The voter today. How do you see that voter? What are they looking for? How are you appealing to that voter, the, the Filipino today? We have a very localized voter. I call them localized because many of them still follow the 50% the the way they vote is really dictated on uh, what many of their leaders or what not necessarily politicians yes. tell them. Informal leaders. Informal leaders, head. meaning it's not really based on an informed choice, yes. meaning they don't have access to social media, uh, barely little uh, access to newspapers or they have access to TV, but you know, as we know, what comes out on TV is not always, uh, well, anyway, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> but um, 
we don't have an in, a, a very informed voter base. Do and you agree? Sorry, PPCRV said that in 2010 elections, the vote buying moved from retail, tingi tingi, the one by one, to wholesale buying entire barangays. Uh, do you see this? Is this something that you're prepared to deal with? No, no. Well, I can only speak about the senatorial elections, yes. but certainly in 2010, in so far as the national candidates are concerned, there was no such thing as vote buying. What would take place in 2007, or even before that, were wholesale uh, cheating, meaning uh, buying election uh, uh, registers, buying provincial election returns. But uh, with Pico Picos, yes. you know, for all the criticisms it gets, Picos was revolutionary. Um, it was fast. <laughs> you know, nobody will. I speak as a new politician. Yeah. There's no one in my family. Own it. Yeah. <laughs> no one in my family. I'm the first one. I'm the youngest. Absolutely outlier. But the only reason why I decided to get on with with the elections was primarily because I felt like there was hope that whatever people voted for would actually emerge mm. because of Picos. And you know, for uh, you know, it has it, all its quirks or whatever it is. But Picos is a giant instrument for democracy in our country. No, let me. I interrupted you. So go back to the Pinoy voter today. You're saying that um, lack of information that they don't have access to, to the right to inform, not necessarily making informed choices. So how are you appealing to them? How are you going to, is there anything in your campaigns you'll do differently? Or is this going to be more of the same? Is this a song and dance um, campaign? Well, I'm not too sure about the song and dance. Well, some of our candidates want to sing and dance, but uh, I don't think that really works today anymore. Um, the campaign is when, when, when the candidates actually go around and do sorties, when you go there, 60, 70 percent of the individuals actually show up are already convinced on who, yes. they're, who they're going to vote for. But uh, what we need to be able to do, really do is carry out a clear message. Like, what are the voters looking for today? Voters are looking for somebody they can cling on hope for. Um, not just I, mm. but there are other members of Congress or individuals who decided to join the national campaign because we truly feel like we are at the threshold of being a great country. And you know, for, for a lot of people, mm. people say it's, it's all cliche, but I truly think that we have a chance with this president. I don't know him. I mean, I've only met him recently. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know him from way back. But I certainly think that with all the things that he's doing, People have always been fed up with past politicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have completely underestimated him. And mm -hmm. I truly feel like he brings a lot to the table. And hope and uh, uh, positive things are something that's very welcome uh, as far as the voters are concerned. That's why he's the subject matter of these mm -hmm. elections, nobody else. Interesting. A lot of people seem to think the same way because you have the stock market on an 18th or 19th high this year alone, right? I mean, there is confidence right now. and I. The, the question is, will it be, can it be sustained? And you're saying... That's scaring me. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, what, go ahead. Go ahead. No, what's scaring me is, I like the stock market. I mean, you know, the stock market is, is, a, is a bellwether of how investors, people have money, mm -hmm. how they actually perceive the companies that we have. And of course, it's born about by, are they confident with the current uh, set of leaders that we have? Is it stable enough to put in billions of pesos? Correct. We had 850 million in net uh, foreign uh, investments to the country last year. A great number of that was in the stock market. Right. But um, it's a very expensive stock market. Mm. It, it it's will, overvalued, many it would will, say. I don't want to say it's overvalued, uh, but it's, it's an expensive stock market. And I don't, want to, I don't want that to be the single measure of our success. Because I think the better success is we've been able to build 550,000 new jobs. There are a great number of uh, uh, big ticket investments that are coming in. Mm -hmm. We are about to have an investment grade uh, rating mm -hmm. soon, hopefully, which brings about people. I mean, people just dismiss that. People dismiss the fact that when you have a credit rating no, we upgrade, won't dismiss it here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, people people don't realize that when you do that, mm -hmm. the amount of debt that we pay actually the amortization goes down. Goes down. So that's more money for health centers, for schools, for and the like. And that all comes out from the fact that people are confident with the leader that we have. 